So at this stage, we've gone in and we've created color for the centipede and for the body, the teeth, and we're not going to put any color on the eyes. We're just going to paint those directly in Photoshop. So this has given us a nice base that we can bring in and start layering in Photoshop and just add the, the final touches. The important thing at this point now is to determine the composition for the figure. So for example, we've got you know, this pose here, which is pretty cool. We've also got this one here, or this position, I should say. So we've got to find uh, what angle we want to view our character from. So the first thing I want to do is determine whether or not we're going to use a uh, landscape format like this, or a portrait format. I'm thinking I'm going to edge towards portrait format. So I'm going to go to the document window, tear this off. I turn off proportion here, and I'm going to switch these values. Click W size and click a new document. Don't want to save the changes. And I want to flip these values from 720 and 960. We'll set it to 720 up here, and then 960 on the bottom. Click resize. That gives us a portrait size document. Click double. That gives us a nice double size document there, so we can draw our character back out and go into edit mode. Now position him on the canvas. You may find it's not quite as interactive with a larger document. So we'll zoom out a bit. Make sure I can see the whole document here while I position this. Okay, so this is our first position here. I want to store this, so I'll go to the Movie menu, Timeline, and I'll show the timeline. And I'll just click a little dot right here, and that'll store this position on the canvas. So I can now scoot the timeline forward, let's say here, and now I could actually store another composition, another position here. I want to see what this looks like from a couple different angles. So I'll click a timeline dot there, and now if I use the arrow keys, I can actually page between the two, just like so. So let's say I want to try even more of, a, of an extreme turn. Maybe I want to try something like this. Just click a dot there, and now I've stored that position. Now, if you want to save the timeline, you can save it separately just as a timeline, or the best thing to do is go to the File menu and save a project. So I'm going to save a project file here. We'll call this Render. I'll just save over the one that's there. And this will save my tools, my camera settings, as well as the timeline and the positions that we've stored here. So it's just a good way to maintain all of the information together. So if I need to go back and render out another pass in six months, I can do that. I don't have to you know, try and fail to reposition the model in the exact same position as my original renders, uh, or try and match the lighting. This will store the lighting as well. And again, I can use my arrow keys here just to page through the different keyframes that I've stored and compare and contrast them. All right, I'm going to create one more here, maybe a couple more. I just want to give myself a few options that I can page through and just determine what the best orientation is for this guy. I like this one because I'm I'm not getting a, a tangency between the thumb and the body there. It creates a nice kind of zigzag. It's a very interesting composition, this one. So I'm going to store that one there.
just gently zoom this one back out. And this one could work nicely as a landscape orientation here. You can see if I were to crop off the bottom here, this actually might be a nice, nicer composition. So it's something if I choose this one, I'll consider recropping and resizing the document back in Photoshop. So let's page through these again and see what we've got. There we go. So once we determine the the composition that we want, we're going to light and render this. We're going to render it using the BPR renderer, which is this new renderer available for ZBrush 4 up here. And this is going to allow us to render and export a series of passes that can then be composited inside of Photoshop, and then we could paint on top of those to create our final image. So I'm going to go ahead and pick an orientation, put some lighting on it, and then we'll come back and we'll start rendering. So now I've decided on an orientation, a composition, and a little slight change of pose. I'm going to make sure that all of my Z tools are unmasked, stepped up to the highest subdivision level. You can actually press the All High button here, and that'll step through all of them and, and make sure that they're at the highest resolution. So at this stage, what we're going to do is we're going to create our render passes. And these render passes will take out of ZBrush into Photoshop to paint on top of and put the finishing touches on. There we go. Everything's at the highest subdivision level now. Looking at the centipede, I do want to make a slight change to him. He's kind of angling in a weird way there. So I'm going to use the mask here. Just going to mask out that top, invert that mask, and then using the transpose rotate, I'm just going to straighten them out. There we go. Uh, Save the project. I'm going to File, Save As. I'm going to store this as Render 3. Now you notice that I haven't continued my paint job down the legs. I'm really not worried about that because I can lay in color in Photoshop and I'm probably going to lose this area in shadow and suggest just the outline of some sort of fabric drape down here. So this is not concerning me at all. I really just wanted a color base for the areas of focus up here. And if this gets lost in shadow or shape, it's actually going to be quite nice because it helps focus your eye into the area that's important. And I'd like to try and avoid having everything in perfectly crisp, sharp focus because it just feels like a 3D render at that point. It doesn't really feel like a painting or an evocative image, and that's really what we're going for, is this sort of evocative character image that gives you an idea of the mood of the scene and what an encounter with this character would feel like. So with that said, let's go ahead and talk more about rendering. I'm going to open up the rendering panel here and dock it on the right side of the screen. We're going to use BPR for our render. BPR is a Best Preview Render. I'll go to Actual Size, and I'm going to scroll up here to the head so we can see the head, and we'll do our test renders here. I'm going to go to my Light menu. I'm going to place the key light, say about here. And I'm going to turn on the secondary light, turn the intensity up, and I'm going to tap once with the mouse to push that to the back. You see how that's now a rim light. We get a nice little sliver of light out of that. Now if you want, you can actually change the color of this light. We could make this a greenish light, for example, just by adjusting that color. Now that's not going to be apparent until you render. As a matter of fact, if I go to the light menu here, I probably want to bring this up more towards white, so it's a very pale hue, because it can actually be pretty strong when you add a color to the light in, um, 
in ZBrush. So let's go ahead and do a test render. I'm going to make sure shadows are turned on here under the render panel and I'll click BPR. And it's going to take a little while to calculate. Once it's done, I'll come back and pause the video while it renders. Here we go, that render is now complete. And you can see that we get this really nice cast shadows through the figure and a nice generalized soft lighting. I'm going to go back to the light menu. I'm going to bring that key light forward just a bit and I'm going to increase the intensity. I'm going to go back to the secondary light and I'm actually going to take that color out because I'd rather introduce that color in Photoshop for the rim light. I'll press BPR again. Now that render is complete. So I'm going to click AA half so I can just look at the whole figure. So yeah, I'm liking I'm liking this effect here. Since I'm happy with the effect of the render, I'm going to come up here and turn on create maps. And that's going to render an image, depth, a shadow pass, ambient occlusion, and a mask. I'm going to turn on ambient occlusion and then just click BPR. It's going to render all of those passes and then we'll export those and I'll come back and show you how we can render a few specialty passes that we're going to want to use and then we'll move to Photoshop and start compositing everything together. So let's go ahead and do that now. I'm going to click BPR and all of these renders will pop into these slots. So those renders are complete now. Let me go ahead and click actual size this gives me the actual size of export here. We've got an image pass, a depth pass, which just gives you a z-depth image, shadow, ambient occlusion, and a mask. So what I'll do is I'll click on each one of them and export them. I've got some previous exports here that I'll just delete. There we go, those images are now deleted, so I'll save the render, just the color render pass with the shadows there as render. Click the next one, we'll save that as depth. If you just click on these thumbnails, it automatically prompts you to save them. And then the mask. Now the mask pass, it's just an overall silhouette. I actually like to have a mask that masks out each object. So to do that, I'll select the flat color shader and I'll actually select a different color. In this case, I'll select green. Go to uh, color. Make sure RGB is turned on. RGB intensity is at 100. I'll go to color, fill object. and I've got a layer on here so what I need to do is come down here to my layers go back into view mode on that one and I'll bake all the layers now I'll go to color fill object there we go now I'll go to the teeth and we'll select a different color for the teeth. Go to color, fill object, go to the eyeballs, color, fill object. We'll go to the centipede, and I can fill him with blue as well because he's nowhere near those eyeballs. The eyeballs are actually stuck at uh, white. Didn't the color didn't take there? Let's see, where am I? Color, fill object. There we go. And I can leave the eyeballs as white. So if I want to export this as a map, I'll just go to Document, Export, and I'll save this as Mat 2. Now I'd like to do a specular pass, and I'll do that by selecting the color black, and go to Color, Fill Object, on each of the subtools. Go to the 
teeth color fill object and I will select uh, basic material too. Now you see that gives me a specular shine. If I go into the material settings, go into the material modifiers, scroll up to specular, I can raise this value to increase the intensity of that specular shine. Now if I go to BPR or just go to render best, it'll give me a nice render of this uh, of this specular shine and I can export that and use it as a screen layer in Photoshop. So I'll do that now. I'm just going to use the best render mode. Go to render best. There we go. That best render is now complete. You see we get a nice specular render. And I'll just go to document export and save this as spec. And on the eyes, I need to make sure that the eyes get black. I don't want those to be white, so I'm going to go to Color, Fill Object. And for some reason, the eyes aren't taking, and that's because I've got layers on them. So I'm going to Bake All. There we go. Now I'm just going to re-render that, um, that specular pass, because I do want that specular shine on the eye as well, even though I'll probably manually paint that in. There we go, that render is complete. So I'll go to Document Export, and then I'll save that as spec. It's right over the original. Now lastly, I want to do a pass that's just gray. So I'll just open up my original uh, project again, and I'll turn off the poly paint. I find it's useful when I'm painting in Photoshop just to have a nice gray shaded pass that doesn't have any poly paint on top of it. Sometimes I end up using it, sometimes I don't. The important thing for me is just to have those options when I get into painting. Here we go. I've brought the original document or the original project back open. Go ahead and select the body. I'm going to bake all my layers. Gonna think about that for a moment. There we go. The poly paint is now turned off on the figure. And I'll just do a quick render and just get us a nice grayscale pass on this. There we go, there's our grayscale pass. So I'll go to document export. And we'll save this one as grayscale. So that completes our render passes out of ZBrush. We're now ready to take these into Photoshop and start compositing them together. So I'm going to go ahead and open Photoshop and we'll pick it up from there. So here we are in Photoshop and I've loaded up all of these render passes. They're all as separate images. And what we want to do at this point is we want to load them into a stack together. So the easiest way to do that is just Control A to select all, Control C to copy, and then I just press Control W to close that image, and then I'll come back over to the, the stack that I want to create, the image that I want to load all of these images in as a layer, and I'll just Control V to paste. And it pastes right in, and I'll just double click it to rename it, color, and I'll double click this background and I'll rename this gray. Now come over here and this is the shadow pass, so I'll control A to select all, control C to copy, control W to close, control V to paste. That came in in the middle there, let's drag that up to the top. Double click and we'll name this shadow. Name this one Matt 2. Name this one Spec. This would be Mat 1. This is our Depth Pass. I'm 
And then last, we've got our ambient occlusion. And I'll just name this OCC for occlusion. And now we have our layer stack. So I'll save this image, go to File, Save As, and I'll just save this as Comp001. Let me drag my dialog box over here so you can see it. Well, for some reason it's not letting me move my dialog box onto the screen, but I just saved it as comp001.psd. Click OK. Let Photoshop think. And there we go, we've now saved our document. There we go, there's our doc dialog box. So it's comp001. Now I want to organize these layers. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my mat passes and my depth passes and I'm going to put them at the top. I'm going to select all of them. Control shift to select them all. And I'm going to group them. And I'll name this group utility. Just because I'm not going to need to access these a lot, and I'm going to use them just for specific things like, you know, matting things out, selecting things, and whatnot. Make sure these actually go into that folder. There we go. Now I'm going to take my shadow and my OCC pass and my spec pass, stack these on top. OCC, I'm going to set to Multiply. Shadow, I'll set to Multiply. I'm going to turn off Visibility on the Utility layer. Spec, I'm going to set to Screen. And there we go. Now we can see our color underneath. The gray, I'm not going to use for anything yet. I could bring this up and, and maybe set it as a Multiply or Darken. Uh, I'll experiment with that as we go and see what I want to use that gray for if I use it at all. Chances are I won't use it, and I'm just going to paint on what we've got right here. So here we go. This is our base upon which we're going to paint. We're going to go ahead and lay some textures under this. I'm going to block out this unpainted portion of the leg here. I might put a little bit of texture in there, or I might just block this in with the suggestion of some fabric. And I definitely know that I'm going to have a light source coming from here and then falling off, so a lot of this area is going to fall into blur and shadow down here. So let's go ahead and start doing that now. I'm going to save this. Photoshop is thinking about that save. There we go.